Chapter 4, Part 1, Nomenclature of Acyclic Alkanes When naming an acyclic alkane, the first part that you have to come up with is the name of the longest carbon chain. And the name of a just simple linear carbon chain is actually really simple. You use the prefix that indicates the number of carbon atoms and follow it up with the suffix ane, A-N-E. So here are the prefixes for all the different numbers of carbon atoms. The ones that you'll use the most are going to be through here. And then these are kind of bonus information that you'll see more on your homework than anything. So naming the unbranched alkanes. These are examples of those unbranched alkane names. So a one carbon alkane is methane, two carbons, ethane, and so forth. Now we also have to come up with names for the unbranched alkyl groups. Um, remember that when you see the suffix YL, it usually means that you're describing something. It's kind of like um, an adjective. So in this situation, we're describing an alkyl substituent. So if you have a one carbon substituent, it's going to be called a methyl group. If you have a three carbon substituent, it's called propyl. And a five carbon substituent is called pentyl. So the really interesting part of this is how do we name branched alkanes? And there's a simple step-by-step -step process and on each slide, we'll introduce a new rule as we encounter new problems. So the first step is to find the longest continuous chain. This determines what we'll call the parent name of the alkane. And then you number the longest chain beginning with the end nearest to the substituent. So in this example, the longest carbon chain is six carbons long. And we started numbering from the right hand side towards the left because our substituent ends up on the second carbon when we number that way. Now the overall goal for numbering um, your parent compound is always to give the lowest possible number to the substituents. So for example, we would not number from left to right because now that substituent is on what we're gonna to have to call carbon number five. And we want to give the substituent the lowest number. Now, when you're coming up with the name, you use the numbers to designate the location of the sub, uh, substituents. Um, because of the fact that they designate the location, um, they're often called locants because they tell you where on the molecule you can find that substituent or functional group. So the correct name for this compound would be 2-methylhexane. So what happens if you have two or more substituents on a molecule? You're going to give each their own number and list these substituents alphabetically. So for example, in this molecule, the longest carbon chain is six carbons long and we have two substituents. And notice that we numbered from left to right because the substituent appears sooner on the left-hand side than on the right-hand side. So the name of this molecule is 4-ethyl-2-methylhexane. And I wanna bring your attention to one more thing. Notice again that we list these substituents alphabetically. So even though the methyl group appears on carbon number two, and then you see the ethyl group on carbon number four, E comes before M. So we list it out as 4-ethyl-2-methyl. When two substituents are on the same carbon atom, you use that number twice. So for example, our longest carbon chain again is six carbons, and both of our substituents this time are on carbon number three. So we have a methyl group and an ethyl group. So it comes out to 3-ethyl-3-methyl-hexane. So far in all of our examples, our two substituents have always been different. So now we have to wonder 
is there something different that we use in the naming if the substituents are actually the same? And the answer is yes. When more than one of the same substituent is present, you use prefixes to indicate multiples of the substituent. So in this molecule, our longest carbon chain is four carbons long, and it doesn't matter which side we number from because the substituents appear one carbon in from either direction. But notice that both of our substituents are methyl groups. So do we call this 2-methyl-3-methyl? No, we're actually going to call it 2,3-dimethylbutane, and the di indicates that there are two of the same prefix. What if there are three of the same pre, uh, substituent? We call it 2,3,4-trimethyl, and in this case, the longest carbon chain is five carbons long, so it's 2,3,4-trimethylpentane. And if we have four of the same substituent, we use the prefix tetra. And this one has a really interesting feature in that um, the methyl groups actually are on some of the same carbons. And so um, we have two methyls on carbon number two, and we have two methyls on carbon number four. So the name ends up being 2244 tetramethyl. You do have to repeat the number to indicate that that's where the methyl groups are. I also want to draw your attention to the um, punctuation that we're using. So when you're separating two numbers from each other, you use commas. When you're separating numbers from letters, you use hyphens. So one of the things that you can think about is number number gets separated by a comma. Number letter gets separated by a hyphen. So next, when you're picking a numbering scheme, you always want to choose to have the greater number of substituents. This rule is kind of confusing without an example. So here's our example. This longest carbon chain has seven carbons in it. So if we number from left to right or right to left, we can see that. Um, in this case, we number from right to left because the substituents appear sooner from the right-hand direction. But you might also notice that there is another seven carbon chain that runs through this molecule. Oops, didn't quite make that. And if we number that way, we end up with fewer substituents. <laughs> And actually, you can number from a couple different directions um, to get the uh, seven carbons. Um, so you always end up choosing the numbering scheme that gives you the most substituents because that's also typically going to give you the simplest substituents. Um, so if you look at this one here, you could give that a name, but you'd have to name it according to the longest carbon chain. And then you'd have to indicate that there are substituents on your substituents which is doable, but confusing. And the goal of this entire naming process, the IUPAC naming process, is to give the most straightforward name so that anybody can read that name and draw the correct structure. And the more convoluted the name is, the less likely it is to be clear. Um, when branching first occurs at equal distances, you choose the name that gives lower numbers overall. So for example, the first branching or substituent appears at the second carbon, no matter which direction you start numbering from, but this other substituent is closer to the right-hand side. So that tells us that we want to number from right to left. So the name of this molecule would be 2,3,5-trimethylhexane, whereas if we numbered from the other direction, we would end up with 2,4,5-trimethylhexane. Now, what you could do is come up with names going from either direction or come up with a numbering scheme from either direction and compare the numbering schemes. And the numbering scheme that has the lowest overall numbers is going to be the one that you should use. So notice that the two and the five are the same but the three is obviously lower than four. 
So the numbering scheme on the left is correct. Um, next, we're going to name branched alkyl groups. So um, we have propane and the propyl group. But you can also have three carbons attached to a larger molecule where instead of being attached to carbon number one, it's attached to carbon number two. And when that happens, you call it isopropyl rather than propyl. The IUPAC way of naming this, um, of indicating that your substituent has a substituent, is 1-methyl-ethyl. Butane has several different varieties. So you have butane and the butyl group, but you also have the isobutyl group and the sec-butyl group and the tert-butyl group. So all of these um, are valid names that you can use. So if you see a tert butyl substituent, you can say, you know, three tert butyl heptane or something. You can use those words to describe a um, substituent group. Okay, let's do some practice problems. Um, after each problem comes up, go ahead and pause and give yourself some time to solve it and then you can push play and watch me work through it for you. So in this first one, um, the longest parent chain is pretty obvious and it doesn't matter which direction we start numbering from because the substituent is directly in the middle. So our longest chain is seven carbons. So our parent name is heptane and we have a four isopropyl substituent. So the correct name for this would be 4-isopropyl heptane. You could also describe um, the substituent that has its own substituent as 1-methyl ethyl. So 4-1-methyl ethyl heptane is also a valid name. Now in this one, um, it does matter which direction you number from. So numbering from right to left is going to give you the lowest number for your substituent. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So this is going to be four tert butyl octane. Or you can call it four one one dimethyl ethyl octane. So um, the longest carbon chain in this substituent is two carbons. And so that is your substituent that has two of its own substituents. That's where the 1,1-dimethyl ethyl comes from. Okay, go ahead and pause and take a second to work on both of these. Okay, the first one is kind of misleading because it looks like you have a tert butyl group, but two of those carbons are actually part of the overall longest carbon chain. So um, you can number one, two, three, four, and then you could number it this way or this way. It wouldn't matter. So I'm just going to keep it all in line. So our longest chain is six carbons. That means our parent name is hexane, and we have a four ethyl substituent, and then we have two methyl groups on carbon number two, so 2,2-dimethyl. Four ethyl, 2,2-dimethyl hexane. Now, in the next one, um, there's actually two different ways that you could number this and you would get the same answer. So the key thing here is identifying the longest carbon chain, which is eight carbons, and then noticing that on carbon three, you have a methyl group, and on carbon four, you have what's called sec butyl. And this brings us to an interesting um, alphabetizing conundrum in that um, we don't count sec when we are alphabetizing. We also wouldn't count tert um, or iso. So all these prefixes don't actually count. Um, neither does like di, tri, tetra, things like that. Um, so you're gonna alphabetize this based on butyl and methyl. So four sec butyl, three methyl octane.